there all, welcome back to our third uh, session this morning. So I would like to invite Mr. Ferbets to present his talk. Okay, um, let me... Uh, End of the presentation. Um, okay. I'm going to share the screen. I have to put the glasses on. Okay. Mm. Okay. Just to share the screen. Okay, can you see? Yeah, we can see. Yeah. So, uh, my name is uh, Istok Sherbets. I come from a company called Insight. A colleague of mine uh, had a session early in the morning. So maybe he already uh, spoke about a little bit about our company. So I will be brief on that. And uh, I will try to present some um, issues regarding the implementing implementing uh, data science or machine learning or let's say artificial intelligence in the insurance business we have quite a, quite a few of uh, examples and study and case studies and uh, what we did what and projects what we uh, have done so maybe it will be interesting for you and then we will try to look uh, at the future and uh, where uh, all this is going to and, uh, uh, and at the end, we can discuss uh, um, and uh, what you think about it and what's your uh, views and experience in that uh, area. So we come from the company called Insight and uh, we have a strange, strange uh, letters in our name. And this is about uh, because of the, uh, at that time when we opened the company, it was a kind of strange uh, legislation about the names of the company uh, and uh, because insight is an English word uh, and uh, they were not uh, the authorities were not really happy about the name so then we put the numbers in the name and they were quite happy about it so that's what uh, why this uh, kind of uh, a little bit, uh, odd name to, uh, to read okay um, we are a company uh, about uh, 60 employees based in Slovenia, uh, and we do uh, all kinds of, uh, uh, in, we work in area which is called BI in general, and that covers uh, uh, many different things uh, from data warehouses, planning, uh, predictive analytics, or machine learning and stuff like that. So it's a lot of different areas. and. Uh, uh, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, experience in all uh, that uh, thing. So probably Greg already covered that and I will just go to the topic. Um, so uh, maybe it's different, uh, different in different companies, uh, different countries. And, uh, but I will try to, uh, try to explain uh, the, the data science in business, insurance business from our perspective. And we worked not only in, uh, for insurance companies uh, for, for in our, in our uh, country, but in the region and abroad as well. Okay, so I, I basically, I think I know a little bit about how it is done uh, uh, worldwide. And, uh, and uh, in the beginning, I will try to cover uh, uh, through our uh, projects and the kind of projects we have done, 
and so that you can have an idea, okay, we cover that, but maybe, maybe we can have something like uh, other things you will see. And at the end, I will try to expand and it's a little bit connected to the previous session. Uh, and uh, where can you start and how can you uh, go if you haven't started already? Okay, so uh, it's a, uh, machine learning is a is a basically is a thing, uh, and a, is a, and uh, which have has been around for uh, quite a long time. And uh, the reason that it's not implemented so widely in all kinds of businesses there are there are many different reasons. Okay, but uh, uh, but let's say in the last couple of or maybe five years or maybe even even more. There, is, there was a dramatic change in accepting the machine learning and uh, or artificial intelligence, however you call it, uh, in, in businesses. But there are still moderate beginnings and there are st still not as widely used as it could be and is, as it should be. Um, and there are some classical applications you might, uh, you might uh, con uh, consider and it's not only connected to insurance business, but all businesses that are highly competitive, which means that uh, if you can lose customers easily, like in, tele in telco business, or maybe even in banking business, or in insurance business as well, in certain areas, then of course you will, uh, you will uh, implement, let's say, churn uh, solution, I will talk about a little bit later, which is how uh, you can predict which customers will leave and which customers uh, will stay. And then uh, you can, uh, you can uh, based on that analysis, you can uh, use uh, this uh, analysis to, to do something. If you don't do anything, then it's a, big, uh, a little bit of problem. You just know, but you don't act and it's uh, no use of it. Uh, and then different kind of segmentations are done uh, and this uh, this is also very typical not only for for uh, for insurance uh, fraud detection if you have uh, cases and the next best offer uh, this is all uh, uh, based on technology that has been around for 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 decades so it's uh, it's not really something new uh, and then there are some other uh, some other uh, possibilities, you can uh, start implementing uh, uh, machine learning and predictive analytics in your business. I will talk about uh, in the second part of the of the uh, of this session. But I think uh, in uh, because of these dramatic changes in accepting the. Uh, the data science and uh, possibilities uh, data science offers, uh, it won't be any longer uh, an, uh, a possibility or option to use it, but it will be a necessity because if you won't have these technologies and if you won't implement these technologies, you will be, uh, you will lose the race of uh, in, in, in global markets, which are uh, of course very present, okay. And for me, because I, I work uh, in that area for a long time, and it's always uh, astonishing how, uh, how very simple uh, things and uh, uh, that are with us for a long time uh, that are very hard to implement in real businesses. And of course, they ha there uh, have been many projects uh, regarding machine learning in, in many different types of organizations and in insurance business as well, but it's not as widely uh, used as it could be. And uh, on the other hand, we have, we have uh, this feeling and this uh, perception that uh, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence is all around us. And the uh, most uh, astonishing uh, case in that regard is this China's big brother project, which is a kind of social scoring uh, system based on uh, uh, machine learning uh, technologies. And it is of course very, very moral, uh, uh, it's questionable, 
And, uh, but uh, on the other hand, from the techno technological point of view is uh, something really, uh, really amazing. And uh, they just, they, in practically they follow a large number of their citizens uh, like uh, with uh, different technologies like face recognition and then con con connecting that to real person and uh, then tra tracking all the transactions and for each each one of them, I won't say for all Chinese because they probably I don't I don't know exactly the year, but uh, they 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 use that widely in a certain problematic area of the, the country, and each uh, person gets uh, a social score. So according to that social score, you get uh, different benefits, or uh, or in the other direction, you won't get uh, you won't get to university, you won't get to I don't know, and in in the case of uh, let's say a problematic uh, uh, nationalities like Uyghurs, you pro you can get in a, in a concentration camp as well. So uh, of course it's uh, it's uh, uh, the Western countries uh, looking at that uh, with uh, with a horror, but. Uh, but all the countries, including the USA, are implementing that kind of technologies to a certain degree. Just uh, we don't know whether that is public or not, like in, uh, Edward Snowden revealed that kind of information. So what I'm trying to say, in, uh, uh, in, on one hand, you have this really sophisticated uh, uh, systems being implemented, implemented, and on the other hand, you have a normal business company and where is a very, very, very difficult to implement like, like a, uh, like a, a churn uh, prediction uh, or uh, our next best offer or something like that. So it's a kind of really, uh, really a strange world and strange uh, things that, uh, that we have uh, spacecraft on the other hand, on the other hand, we have just a simple uh, simple things that are very hard to, to, to do. So uh, uh, the question arises, okay, maybe you are far advanced. Maybe you use that satellite images and you do the machine learning upon them uh, and then you have everything automated. Maybe you have in your insurance business automated uh, uh, claim system and uh, uh, car damage system or stuff, stuff like that. So it's very good for you. But what, what about if you don't have it? Are you too, too late? Uh, where do you start? Uh, do you buy technology or do you have your own data scientist team? These, these, are, these are all the questions that uh, arises in the, in the minds of the, uh, of the uh, people who lead, uh, who lead uh, companies, okay? And uh, which, which I see uh, um, on daily basis that uh, many different companies, including of course, business company, uh, uh, insurance companies, uh, they uh, try to, uh, uh, they have different employees and th that those teams are called data scientists. And uh, it's not really, uh, maybe, I don't know, five years ago, maybe it was a rare thing to, 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 uh, to, to have that kind of, uh, uh, employees, but nowadays it's very common. Uh, uh, are those people easy to find? No, they are not. And they're just coming out of the, uh, the universities uh, and uh, uh, they are hard to, to, to find. Okay, and uh, can you train your own people to uh, existing employees? Of course, with certain, uh, with certain uh, type of uh, prerequisites they, they really need. So if, um, and they can be trained, but it will take some time, okay? So I will go to cases. Uh, we have covered in our projects and many more, of course, uh, but uh, uh, I will just more, uh, most typical, and then uh, we will move on to the, to the future uh, scenarios, okay? So, I was talking about this uh, churn prediction. Churn prediction is a very standard uh, application. And, uh, and of course it depends very highly on your business. And uh, uh, for each uh, uh, data scientist, it's not sufficient to know uh, the, the craft of data science. So how to do analysis, how to do the models, how to interpret the models, how to prepare the data for the models and stuff like that. 
but uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's necessity to know the business, okay. And this is the most difficult part. The, the craft uh, you're going to, uh, you, you can learn in, at university or by yourself or different courses they offer. But uh, to know the business is, uh, is, uh, is very um, crucial for every uh, machine learning application. Okay. Um, and uh, to know the businesses, uh, to, to know the churn uh, uh, business in, uh, to churn issue in, uh, in banking or in insurance or in telco is a very different matter. And uh, what you have to do as a, as a data scientist uh, in the beginning, before, long before uh, you're going to run the algorithms and to create the models yeah, is, to, is to understand the business and to prepare the data. And many times when I talk to my friends or to everybody who's not really, uh, who's just interested in, in uh, data science or machine learning, uh, like uh, in general way, uh, it seems that there are all the data possible in the world somewhere and you can, uh, you can just uh, get it and you just uh, put those, that data in the algorithms and you get the score uh, or whatever. But it's not like that. It's uh, before uh, running the algorithms, you have to prepare uh, the data. And this is maybe 80% of the whole work. And you just not, don't uh, just, uh, and you have to prepare data in a specific way. And that specific way is, uh, uh, is uh, really uh, something between uh, engineering and between uh, art. You have to describe the moment uh, with the data of the of some of some event, and this is the, the very difficult, and uh, because sometimes uh, and you have to let's say in case of churn, you have to find the attributes which are connected to the which are connected to the um, to the uh, target you're going to model, and uh, and you have to go and, and and you have to ask yourself, okay. So if uh, you, you get the historical data of the churn of a certain person, which is then generalized, of course, and then you have to ask yourself uh, what happened at that time that somebody churned, but not at that time, but a little bit before, because you're going to predict. Uh, and then, okay, uh, was it a better, better uh, offer from the competition? Was it better, uh, I don't know. And there are certain attributes that are uh, not available to you. Some are not useful to you. Then there are, there are uh, when you gather the data, it's a, it's a lot of null values, so it's not missing data. And so it's a lot of, it's a struggle to, to, to prepare the whole thing. Okay, and then you have your, uh, your data, okay, historical, of course. And, uh, and you're trying to predict the future based on this historical data you gathered from the past. And the idea is if the business hasn't changed, and that's why you don't, you probably normally you don't go uh, too far back in the history. And that if nothing really changed, then, and if the patterns are still the same, I would use those patterns and predict in the future. This is the basic idea, okay? And then in this, in the case of churn, you're going to predict who's going to leave your company in next month, uh, tomorrow, next year or something like that, okay? And then uh, if you, we see uh, that uh, chart uh, uh, below, uh, the, the red line is just the, the random. If you, if, you would, uh, if you would predict on random, uh, I don't know, 50% uh, of, the, of the people, you would get, uh, uh, you would get 50% of the churn. So, uh, uh, in, but normally it's a uh, churn or other, uh, or other things you're going to predict normally is a very rare event. So it, this brings a lot of pain and, and a lot of uh, problems uh, because uh, you can predict, you can predict, uh, uh, let, let's say that uh, the churn is just 2%. What if you would create a good model and you would just say, okay, 
uh, uh, nobody will churn. Will you have a good model? Uh, well, in theory, if you ask yourself how accurate is my model, it's 98% uh, accurate, but it's not very useful. So you have this kind of thing you have to you you have to tackle, and it's uh, at the end you you need you get a you get a um, you get a, a list for each individual customer and uh, the probability or propensity of the of the churn okay and then uh, uh, the story is not ended yet i have seen projects many times that list was provided and then the marketing or sales department uh, uh, doesn't do anything about it and if they if you don't do anything about it it's the same as if you don't have it and then there's another level okay uh, if you you provide the list and then how are you going to divide those customers uh, according to the channel score and something else to make a marketing action. So to, to prevent the score, what are you going to do to prevent somebody to, to churn, okay? And uh, this is another thing which is not necessarily necessarily connected to the to the data uh, to the machine learner or to the data scientist, but they usually require the cause. And this is another issue and another thing that you can provide uh, you can provide the, the business that they can uh, they, they can go further. Okay, so it's not really uh, it's not really a journalist is not enough, but you need a, 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 an explanation. And then the normal thing, what are you going to offer to persuade them? And it's a kind it can be another model. And in in machine learning, it's it's uh, it can be a cascade. So one model can lead to another model, and another model. And then it can be quite complex, but if it is uh, beneficial, and if the uh, and if the the let's say the the, the final the final goal uh, in this context is not really uh, is not really to to make a good uh, uh, prediction because and you can always measure good prediction uh, post festum, but it's to to reduce the churn uh, they have, and this is how you know. That the, your system is working, and if it if it is working, then the the reason behind is that it's much uh, much cheaper to uh, retain the customer than to obtain a new one. Okay. Then there is another uh, there, there is another uh, thing we we do quite often. It's a customer rating. So it's, it's a little bit the same like that those, that Chinese thing that you, you you rate customer in a certain way. Okay. So, and as insurance business, you have many different, many different uh, uh, type of businesses inside the, the insurance. And for each kind, let's say this is for car, uh, for insurance, and you get the cost, uh, you get customers, uh, you give the customers a score. It can be numbers, it can be uh, letters, it can be whatever. And then you can combine different score for Casco, for no, for normal, regular car insurance, for assets, for for life, and stuff like that. And then you you know how valuable the customer is for you. Okay, and uh, so this is a kind of table, and uh, uh, and how the, the 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 ratings are changing through time. Okay, you start in a certain in a certain uh, letter. So basically you don't know anything about because you're just a new customer. And then the customer goes in years through the, through the, uh, this kind of this, uh, ratings. And normally uh, in normal businesses, uh, the majority of customers go to A, A plus or something like that. But uh, some customers go bad and, and, and then it depends on you what you're going to do about that. Uh, customers, uh, but uh, this is al already a business question, not really a machine learning uh, question. Okay, so, and the, the uh, beauty of this uh, rating process uh, we did is that it's, uh, it's uh, if you uh, ask yourself about the machine learning techniques, they are quite simple. But there are, uh, have, but they were heavily involved uh, experts as well. So in the beginning, in the first uh, session, uh, we, we got uh, a kind of uh, first pr proposition model and then th that model uh, got uh, the, the experts and then the experts uh, evaluated the model and then created their own uh, groups 
and then we uh, we uh, combined uh, the the first proposition model and the model from the experts, and we did the automated thing uh, for the future. And then each uh, each uh, period, each month, uh, each day, whatever uh, you define the granularity, then you get uh, this uh, score. Uh, for the customer, so when the and so that's and then the 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 the, the sales people and the marketing people know how to treat the customers also according to their uh, scoring uh, of the uh, in for the certain businesses and uh, scoring in the general. Okay, okay. Then it was a kind of uh, uh, different uh, uh, a kind of uh, different approach uh, um, project which was uh, uh, during the process of the, uh, 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 the customers go through, uh, they have to sign different documents. And sometimes it happened, the documents were not really signed or they were not signed correctly or they were signed badly and stuff like that. So they had, uh, uh, they had uh, one guy uh, or a department uh, who checked uh, who checked uh, documents if everything is okay. And the idea behind was, can we do that automatically, okay? And uh, uh, we did a kind of uh, signature process and which, uh, uh, which, uh, go, which goes through uh, signed, uh, uh, signed documents, papers, uh, which are of course scanned. And then the, the, the problem was, can we determine uh, whether this document is signed properly or not. Okay, and uh, below there are three uh, different uh, uh, cases. So in the first, uh, in the first, it's uh, it's not signed, uh, and it's uh, it's uh, seen straight away. Okay, the second one is signed. Okay, it's not uh, so it's not really uh, debatable. Uh, but what about the third one? Um, well. <clears throat> It's uh, debatable, okay? So, uh, and uh, so the uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithm uh, uh, learned that, uh, uh, that in these cases, uh, so the first, uh, the, the uh, propensity for the, whether the document signed for the first case would, would be, it's uh, not signed, it's zero. And uh, the second one is, I don't know, 100. And the third one is, let's say, I don't know, 10% or something like that. And, a co and there, is, there was a threshold. And according to that threshold, you can just take uh, the, the, just the problematic, uh, problematic uh, documents and you do something about it. You don't have to go through all the, uh, through all the documents. So this was the idea to shorten uh, and to, to reduce the burden of a certain uh, department to go through all the documents. And you can use that kind of thing uh, in uh, many different areas, okay? Then uh, there was this uh, health insurance problem, which is uh, uh, also, um, uh, which was quite complex uh, because uh, it was uh, combined uh, with uh, uh, churn prediction, claims prediction, expenses, profit, uh, and then to optimize all that kind of thing, because uh, I don't know, uh, in Slovenia, we have a kind of uh, uh, strange system or strange, or maybe a, a different system from the other countries, I don't know really, uh, about uh, uh, these different health insurance have to, uh, at the end, uh, put all the uh, numbers uh, in, on the table, and then they, they have some, kind of uh, financial trans transactions depending on the couple of attributes, sex and, uh, and, uh, gen and uh, age and something else, okay? And uh, uh, in this project, it was also a very, uh, what came uh, out was a very um, uh, issue that are common for all uh, machine learning uh, uh, projects and this is uh, this GDPR uh, issue, which uh, which covers the uh, what kind of information you can use to uh, that you, you don't uh, go into the problems with the uh, personal data. So it is a it is a huge topic in uh, machine learning and uh, 
uh, the boundaries are set and sometimes you have to overcome uh, that problems because in here you could you, you could not just tackle the each individual person but you had to uh, generalize that according to the region and stuff like that so it is, it, it is quite complicated it, it complicates uh, machine learning but of course it's a it's a it's a necessity to to protect the personal data and you have to encounter that if you go to the um, uh, projects okay um, let's I have 15 minutes I will just go on uh, then it's a very classical uh, classic uh, uh, project and uh, all companies do that and not not only, uh, insurance company only uh, so the, the issue is what to offer a specific customer that uh, uh, that comes to the to the office or that uh, uh, ran uh, out of the insurance at, at the time or just the, what what will you offer uh, uh, customers and what with higher propensity than random okay uh, because uh, in marketing uh, campaigns you don't sometimes you do uh, just shoot blank, uh, blindly uh, to to get some result but it's much better to 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 make offers just uh, that you think or the, the system think, uh, think uh, that uh, this more likely that customer will accept because you, if you just start to uh, bugging the customer, the cu customers all the time with uh, with offers. Then at the end, you don't even look at the offer. Okay, so it's uh, one shot, and then okay, if somebody takes that, it's okay. Otherwise, you try some other time, but not really uh, next day. Okay, and uh, so uh, you have again, uh, you have customer data, and okay, those GDPR uh, issues are de debatable depending on the country. And then you have uh, different products, and then you have history of uh, the customers that uh, what kind of product product uh, um, that customer uses, and then you have uh, you you have to model, okay? And then at the end, when the you get models, you do the marketing actions, okay? And uh, now it's maybe a uh, time that uh, I. Uh, I, I uh, uh, reflect a little bit on how the models are created, okay? You always get this um, historical data. If you, don't have, if you don't have historical data, you cannot do all the analysis, but you can do some, okay? Uh, and uh, historical data based, let's say in this context of uh, next best offer is uh, what kind of uh, things customers accept it for the offer, this is one possibility. Okay, and uh, when you get when you gather that data, you just divide that uh, that uh, data set on the on the uh, training and testing data set. So on training, you learn the algorithms uh, and you create the models. On testing data set, testing data set on sometimes validation, it's uh, the data that models uh, uh, haven't seen, and this is the reason. That uh, and if the the but it's very beautiful because uh, and uh, because you have on that data uh, the result, and then even though the model predicts on this unseen data, a model predicts okay that one is going to to the higher propensities to the, he will take I don't know uh, I'm just making it up a uh, cask or whatever, and the model says something else, and the model say, uh, model says this and the the real uh, the real thing is still in the data and then you can compare. And that's how you know if the model is okay and that's how you can trust that model will see, uh, will be good in the future as well. So this is the, the little trick uh, you do. And then of course, uh, as I said before, uh, you, need, uh, you need to explain to the, to, the, to the business why somebody is going to take uh, that thing, or why somebody is why somebody is going to to churn, or why somebody will do will commit a, a, a claim fraud or something like that. So, um, uh, and this is a necessity for them, that, so that they can do something with the score. 
and this is much easier if you understand the reason. So this is a, it's never uh, even though it is the the, the list is per uh, individual customer, but the reason behind is for the group that customer for for, for uh, that customer belongs to, and, uh, and for that group it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, normally if you have that that kind of model it's an explanation as well. So this is the rule that uh, that is made uh, basically uh, young males that uh, have a beautiful red uh, sports car and that uh, <clears throat> that uh, <clears throat> have also uh, a life uh, a life uh, uh, insurance policy with us something like that so this is and then uh, that the marketing guys need to have uh, 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 an idea how they will address that uh, that customer okay okay so then it's another uh, fraud detection problem and in with fraud there are two possibilities if you have historical data which is not very common in, um, in my experience or at least it's not uh, very common to to have them uh, formalized in the in the data database data warehouse whatever then you just do the segmentation so in this in the picture in the left side below it's uh, there are cases of the of the of the claims let's say and there is one claim which is in the middle and this is seems to be a little bit strange okay so this is just an example okay and is, is that a fraud uh, well we don't know but it's something is different from the others so maybe we could check uh, check with it on the right side it's it's the same techniques it's the same techniques as uh, which uh, with uh, children and uh, uh, and uh, areas like that, it's, uh, we know the result and we have historical data. It's called supervised learning, but uh, it's uh, for, for some other time, okay? So then uh, these are more or less classical applications that have been around uh, for a long time. So, but uh, I will uh, now try to present a little bit uh, more poss possibilities which opened in the in the last uh, decade or so and uh, which opened with uh, this uh, um, not only convolutional and uh, neural networks but renaissance of the of the neural networks neural networks uh, with us again for a long time but something else was added to the to the neural networks and uh, and of course a processing power as well so uh, you need a lot of cases, and you need uh, normally, and you need, uh, and you need. So that's why processing power. But something else was done before. So in this case, filtering. Okay, and uh, with that kind of uh, um, uh, thing, uh, and you can do computer vision, which was unimaginable before. And also the gentleman before me was talking about uh, machine learning in that area. And they all started with the uh, with the students with the student going to a, a computer vision competition, and uh, and from that time on everything changed in the world really literally. So it's uh, it was a it was a really a revolution and all the PhDs and all the things people did com uh, computer vision before uh, all went to the to the to the trash. And everything uh, began uh, began uh, from there uh, on. Okay, so and that of so computer vision means that you can you can uh, detect the faces like in that Chinese example, or you can you can detect which crop is uh, is uh, uh, where is drought or where is a flood or where is a, like gentleman before me explained. Uh, so uh, and uh, you can do. Uh, that uh, automatically, or you can, or you can just uh, let's say you you have a camera in your car, and it, the uh, like you have these self-driving cars, and then you the this computer vision detects the the sign, traffic uh, traffic lights, the the edge of the road, and stuff like that. So it's a really revolution. Uh, so how can you use that in insurance business? Uh, in many, many different ways. So, uh, and it will be your business in future for sure, in one way or another. And uh, of course, there are uh, regulatory concerns, which public, uh, what you, uh, if you if they take uh, uh, automatically uh, the picture of your of your face, can they process it? Uh, can they connect it to you? 
like it's done in the in the uh, in the uh, in the Apple Apple just sends sometimes uh, when you have this Apple um, uh, environment and you uh, upload the images they can just they just send you album from your past uh, experience and past travels and so there are many many legal issues about that but uh, the technology itself is is beautiful and of course data security and stuff like that okay so the first thing and i'm not saying that you have you uh, that you have to uh, build your own system probably you can buy the systems that already exist so auto, how to automate the car damage assessment, okay? So the, it's a very normal situation. Every driver sooner or later experience uh, that uh, situation. You have a damage, you go to the, to the claim center and then, uh, then there is a whole process. At the end, uh, something happened with the car and uh, you get the money uh, uh, for, the, for the repairment or not. Okay, so, may, uh, or, so uh, the issue is how to automate this, um, this uh, process in a way that it's more uh, reliable, that the fraud is protect, uh, pre prevented, and that, uh, that uh, you don't need so many people around it. Okay, and this is already uh, applications that run and, uh, and uh, sooner or later in, I don't know, in my prediction is in a couple of years, everybody will have one degree of that kind of that uh, systems or not okay so this is the uh, uh, this is um, example uh, so if you have a hurricane or if you have a i don't know a, a bad storm and then uh, then the, the damage uh, is on houses and then you normally call uh, call the the guy uh, who comes to uh, to a uh, to do a, the assessment of the of the damage, okay, and this is can be very uh, time consuming uh, in case of large uh, of large uh, events, and that's uh, that's why this is the idea how the drones can take the photos and then you just uh, process that automatically. Uh, the gentleman before me uh, explained that how you can do that with the satellite. But with the satellite, I don't know if you just, uh, I didn't uh, really understand how you, uh, how, if you can just say uh, to somebody or uh, how do you, how, how do you gather the data? Okay, satellite, get me the picture of this area and all the, and uh, so, and then you start processing. This, this is something I don't uh, understand, but maybe there is a service you can do that. And it's a, an inter interesting topic because if you can do that, you can do really, really, uh, 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 good things with it because here you need a drone to to take the photos. Okay, so this is the this agriculture uh, uh, thing uh, the gentleman was talking also about probably some other things. But uh, then uh, you can do diff also different uh, uh, things. So you can uh, do the in real time. Uh, um, risk assessment and I don't know the prices so you said the prices and it also depends on the on the business need you, you, you can do but the, the beautiful thing is you can do that automatically if you have the data and data if you have you can, uh, like I said before and then uh, in in health insurance is also uh, many different applications uh, how you can do that and this is also this I don't know if you heard this uh, uh, about this uh, IBM Watson, it's not for me to, to make advertisement, advertisement but uh, it's, uh, it was uh, uh, now, it's quite, a, quite many years ago, there was uh, this uh, uh, competition in, in uh, it was a kind of, uh, it was a, a quiz called Jeopardy or something like that, that uh, machine and this machine, uh, artificial intelligence, let's say, System won the, the this uh, competition, and uh, they named in this IBM all kind of products uh, 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 based on this name. So, but uh, they use that heavily in the insurance uh, for in the health insurance, and then uh, you can just uh, with uh, with system. Sometimes you can help, and sometimes it is even uh, better prediction than to. For the humans to take uh, to look at the pictures and to to do the diagnosis of the of the disease they have. So, but uh, the, probably the combination is the best thing. 
Okay, um, I changed almost to the end. I had uh, some other slides, uh, but I have a couple of minutes left. So the question arises, you have many possibilities. If you don't have, uh, if you don't have um, anything, or you uh, in your in your company, or if you just started, what can you do? Do you just buy the solution, or do you have your own uh, uh, team that uh, that uh, does the development, or do you use Python? Do you use R? Do you use some? Uh, what kind of tools do you use? Those are all kinds of different uh, questions. Uh, that uh, that are uh, real, and then you have just to decide what you're going to do and what you're going to how you're going to implement data science in your company. But sooner or later, every company, not only insurance, will have that kind of systems for sure, and it will it will just increase in time, and it will just uh, go on and on and on. So thank you for your. Uh, attention and uh, I'm ready for questions. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. for this really intriguing uh, lecture. So are there any questions, remarks, comments from the audience? So if, if this is the case, either raise your hand or type the question in the chat on the Q&A. Well, I have um, quite some of the questions, if I may. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, I was, um, well, I didn't expect somehow that you would touch the GDPR problems, but these really uh, seem to be getting more and more important. And probably they, uh, do not make your work easier. Yeah, sure. There are that many things that you have to take care about. Uh, but from the point of view of the machine learning, um, I have uh, quite some questions. So uh, the first question uh, is related to the case of the car crash you have presented. So you would like to uh, assess the probability of you know, a certain customer to have uh, some particular type of behavior, let's say, not necessarily the car crash, but some particular type of behavior. And then assume that you use the machine learning on your data. So in your case, you had really very specific data for the car crash, so you could then uh, correlate the results with the data you were given. So this gave you the possibility to explain why the behavior of a certain customer was such and such. But in general, if you just use the um, machine learning as such, then you don't really know uh, how the machine learned to get the result. So there are more, um, so th these explainability problems are becoming more and more relevant. So some, some machine learning process tells you that machine told you that this would be probably the best, I don't know, strategies, strategy, solution and so forth. But uh, I don't know, the, the manager would like to know why this is so. So did you encounter such problems with, with your work uh, and how, how did you treat them? Yeah, uh, so uh, it's normal uh, that this kind of que question is raised, okay? And then you have two types of uh, algorithms. One is that you, you, it's a kind of black box, like neural network. It can be explained a little bit, but you just need something, uh, something uh, in between, okay? And then you can just, uh, some, sometimes you just try to explain the consequences of the prediction. But uh, there are certain algorithms that give, uh, that, uh, uh, give you explanation uh, included. 
So this like this is like a decision mm -hmm. trees and some other algorithms. And then of course there is a, then it's a, um, a question how you're going to interpret uh, for that kind of thing because sometimes business is not really if you just give the this uh, decision tree groups then uh, businesses uh, sometimes they want a little bit more straightforward human explanation and this is yeah. the uh, this is a kind of a different problem but uh, so there are algorithms that give you explanation and then uh, there are algorithms that are black box. So if, uh, if uh, then you have to de decide which, uh, which uh, uh, you will use. If the prediction uh, accuracy is more important and if there you, you have black box, then you will just use the black box algorithms. But, if the, and, but in many cases, the, the, it, it doesn't really matter if the, if the, uh, if the probability or propensity is uh, let's say 70% or 72, it doesn't really make any difference. Then, and then, uh, uh, then the explanation is, uh, is uh, normally uh, used. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, the, the case with the car crash, uh, and uh, the uh, image processing, um, leads to a question. So, can you, with today's tools, uh, determine whether the uh, damage was really made by a car crash? So, yeah. not that someone someone would go there with a hammer and smash the car, but that it was really a car crash. Okay, so. Uh, it's the same question as for every every um, other uh, machine learning issue. Okay, so but the uh, this uh, example I showed you about is was was not really uh, was not really whether this is a, a fraud or not, or whether it is done by hammer or car but uh, how to calculate the, the damage automatically. Okay, so it's a little bit different, but uh, we, let's say that it is a, a system that, uh, that, uh, tried, that uh, tries to uh, determine whether that was a fraud or not, or a hammer mm -hmm. or a normal car. So it's, it's the same as with all other uh, machine learning uh, problems. So if you have history of uh, cars being smashed with a hammer, and the history yes. of the uh, car being smashed by the car, then of course the algorithm will learn uh, that kind of things. But you, if you don't have any ha uh, cases that uh, are done with the yes. hammer, of course uh, mm -hmm. you will learn nothing or the algorithm will learn nothing and you, it will be not possible to, to predict that kind of things. But it's the same, it's uh, the basic ideas behind uh, are uh, really uh, simple and uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and can be used in many different areas in the same way. So whether that is a churn or whether that is a, a hammer crash thing or something else, it's the same uh, concept and the same idea behind. You just need cases in one in uh, mm -hmm. one way or another way. Yeah. And uh, then I just have a comment on this radiological diagnosis yeah. uh, diagnostics. Um, so you showed some, I guess, um, MRI scans or CT scans. And um, there is um, a measure in mathematics, which is called box dimension. So it is uh, used to um, observe the scans because uh, the healthy tissue has some particular box dimensions. and it turns out that uh, the changes from healthy tissue, uh, so you have some pathological changes, are observed by measuring these box dimensions earlier than can be observed by just looking at, at the scan. And uh, as I know, this was already used for some types of cancers or um, leukemia cases and so forth, because uh, the structure of this um, tissue and the, the, the white blood cells uh, changed. So this, uh, I guess this really has, has a, a lot of future. Yeah, but so thank you, sorry? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's very 
you always like uh, as a machine, uh, uh, as a data scientist, what I should call it, you always look for that kind of attribute. And if you have that kind of attribute you just mentioned, it's a really, really important thing. And uh, this is the, the, the thing, the, sto the storytelling uh, with the data. And mm -hmm. uh, if you include that kind of uh, attribute in your data, and then your accuracy goes from, I don't know, up to another level. And this mm -hmm. is why it's so important to understand the business and to understand all the different things that, uh, that you can use that kind of thing. So it will just improve your accuracy to, uh, to another level. But, um, but if you don't have the, uh, with the with the computer uh, recognition, uh, with the image recognition, there is a different type of, uh, let's say different type of uh, analysis and you just combine both. And then mm -hmm. maybe it's even better result. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. Well, thank you very much. This was really a nice presentation. Mm -hmm.